I give honor and glory to the Almighty God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior on today. My subject for today will be entitled constipation. Constipation means irregular, a difficult remover of the bowels. The common cause of constipation is not always related to an underlying condition. It may be called by insufficient quantities of fiber or water in the meals, change in diet or normal activities, physically inactive, holding stool for long period of time, even when you have the urge. Drugs, sexes, narcotics, and antidepressants, and anti-acid. Can you imagine eating a good meal, but your body never digested? The food would just sit in your stomach while the food would age. Nothing positive will come out of it. You will get sicker over time because your body never received the nourishment it meant to receive. Just think about it. Just like our natural bodies, our spiritual bodies depends upon the mixing of our intake unto who we are. Spiritual constipation. A person who has not released sin becomes spiritual constipated. Sin remains while they suffer the consequences of sin or cumulative effects. The same is true with any believer who refuse to own up to their sins. Not their, just their sins, but the weights that so easily get them off track. Sin and your weights will cause you to get spiritually constipated. Well, Psalms 51, 7 says, Purge me with your hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. What is this saying? This saying is an inside job. It starts within and then comes out. Many people in the church today are spiritually constipated. Some people may know God's word, but it just sits in their minds and become stagnated because they never digest or absorb it. It doesn't become a part of who they really are. As a result, the body of Christ began to become not affected in their work and service for God. See, you might, church might be vulnerable to spiritual constipation if you do what? If you do not take time to fellowship with God on a daily basis. See, all you need to do is just have a little talk with Jesus. Well, you might become spiritually constipated if you are not putting what you learn from God's word into your daily life, your daily practice. Or you might become spiritually constipated if you do not allow God to use or you do not use your spiritual gifts to help others. Forgive me if I am TMI. Too much information. But when I was a child and I found myself in a constipated condition, my daddy would say, well, what you need, you need some working medicine. It usually will be castor oil. While the working medicine didn't taste good, it certainly got my digestive system a moving. See, the Holy Ghost is medication for spiritual constipation. It will clean you from the inside out. Uh-huh. Clean you from the inside out. See, some is constipated with sin, with bitterness, with jealousy, with covetousness, with hatred. 
But Romans 6, 12 said, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it and it lusts. And then Romans 6, 14 says, for sin has no dominion. What it's saying, sin has no power over you once you have accepted Christ as your personal savior in your life. Sin don't have control over you. For you are not under the law, but now you're under grace. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Here are three things I want you to consider if you suspect that you are dealing with spiritual constipation. Number one, anchor yourself in God. Life is rough and life is tough sometimes. And sometimes we feel like a ship trying to navigate on a stormy sea. We feel helpless at the mercy of the waves that's rising up against us. But when you are anchored in God, you feel secure in the midst of life storms. See, you need to anchor yourself in God. When you anchor yourself in God, your emotions is not tossed to and for in every situation that comes your way. How do you know that you are anchored? You seek the Lord in the starting of your day. Your quiet time together with him may include prayer, praise, worship, study, or whatever you are led to do in that specific day. But after that empowering starts, then continue to fellowship with God as you go about your daily activity. See, seek his presence in which you will find joy. When we seek God's presence, seek his truth in which we'll find understanding and we'll find peace of mind. Decide that your relationship with the Lord will succeed all others. Therefore, you will take time to nurture your relationship every day with God. Number two, appropriate God's word. Appropriating God's word means that you want to grab hold of it and make it your own so you can indigest it, meditate upon it, and ask the Lord to bring understanding. Finally, you look for ways to practice what you learn through the word. With practice, and time, God's word will mold and shape you into the Christ likeness so that you can display his character to a world that desperately <coughs> needs the Lord. Psalms 51 10 say, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew in me a steadfast spirit within me. Number three, access and use your spiritual gifts. Did you know that each Christian received one or more spiritual gifts at the time of salvation? We are meant to use these gifts to help meet the needs in the church and out of the church. Proverbs 18, 16 says, a man's gifts Make room for him and bring him before great men. If you want God to open doors for you that no man can close, using your spiritual gift is a great place to start. Will you do inventory over yourself? Will you check to make sure you are not spiritually constipated? Will you check to make sure that God is free to use you in the now season? Let us pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, God, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. God, we are asking you to search us from the inside out.
And God, we refuse to be spiritual constipated. But God, we want to be free to praise you. We don't want sin to have dominion and control over our life. But God, we want to be effective witnesses in this season. God, we want to be able to serve you to the fullness. And God, we give your name the praise. And we give your name the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.